out there in internet land. Uh, this is Chris Compton at the Blue Sea Ranch studio. There's been a lot of consternation and stress and pain and suffering on Ohm's Law forever and ever and ever. This is a, a little tutorial thing to help you guys figure out how to use Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is typically put out in these triangle shapes and there's some things to know about these triangle shapes right off the bat. The first thing to know about is the line through the middle is the divide by line. So anything that is above the line is divided by things below the line. All right, so amps into watts will give me volts. Volts divided into watts will give me amps. Resistance in ohms divided into volts gives me amps. Amps divided into volts gives me ohms. The beauty of Ohm's law, if you know any two electrical values, you can find the other two. So for instance, if I know, as it shows here in the slide, if I know volts and amps, I can find resistance. And just so happens that if I know volts and amps, I can also find wattage or power. But we'll get there, we'll get there. So, Ohm's resistance is not known. That's why the R is X'd out with a red X. All right, amps and volts are known. The solution is to divide amps, boom, down here it's 10 amps, into volts, 120 volts, and that will give you the resistance in ohms. And you can see here, I did the division, 120 volts divided by 10 amps, and this would be 12 ohms resistance. There you go, just like that. Here's another one. If you don't know amps, but you know volts and, and ohms resistance, same deal. You've got volts, 120 volts. You've got resistance, 12 ohms. You divide 12 into 120 volts, and it's gonna give you 10 amps. If you know any two electrical values, you can find the other two. Well, this time we don't know voltage but we know amperage and we know resistance. So what do we do here? We use the multiplication sign, the X, and it's very simple. We go 10 amps times 12 ohms resistance, and that's gonna give me 120 volts. Now we're changing up here and we're gonna find wattage or power, P for power, which is wattage in electricity. We have here, we're gonna find power or wattage. P stands for wattage or power. We know it's a 1200 watt load. We know it's a 120 volt load, but we don't know what the amperage is, right? So maybe this is a 1200 watt electric heater. We know that it's 120 volt because that's what it says on the nameplate. To find out how many amps this thing should draw, we're gonna divide 120 volts into 1200 watts, and we're gonna get 10 amps. Next one, we don't know voltage, but we know wattage, power, and we know amperage. Just another version of the same thing. We've got 1200 watts, we've got 10 amps. 10 divided into 1200 is 120. So it's 120 volts. Next one, we don't know wattage. We don't know the wattage for this device, but we know the amperage and we know the voltage. Once again, use the multiplication sign here. That's 10 amps times 120 volts. And what's it going to give me? It's going to give me 1,200 watts. Just remember what the symbols are, how to manipulate the symbols. If you know two values, you can find the other two. So this cartoon says it all. I love this cartoon. I saw this cartoon years ago. It's still out there. You can find it on the web. It's out of an old carrier slideshow. It takes one ohm. This is, this is basic Ohm's law period, at the simplest pictorial version of it, I like it, it takes one volt right here to push one amp right there, although it looks like he's kicking him, through one ohm of resistance, all right? So if you use Ohm's law to calculate this, it's pretty simple. I've got one amp times one ohm, one times one equals one volt, okay? I've got one amp times one volt, one times one equals one watt. Or you can do the division, you can go one into one equals one, and it goes on and on. Where people get screwed up or where I see students get all panicky and weirded out on this deal is when you change from one instead of 
just one. You could, like the previous example, I'm using 10, 120, 1,200, et cetera. But if you just plug the numbers in in the right places, you can calculate this stuff all day long without missing it, without missing it. So here's another good example of how this works, Ohm's law and, and electricity flow in general. It's very good to understand the values of electricity. Yes, it is. This comparison is accurate in all aspects. And what we're looking at here is a comparison of electric system versus a water system. And this comparison is a, a great comparison. It works just the same way. Water and electricity work the same way. We've got water pressure. That equals voltage pressure. We've got nozzle restriction. That equals ohms resistance. We've got gallons per minute or gallons per hour flow. That's our amperage. And then total gallons flow is wattage. Okay, you should already understand water dynamics well, so use this comparison to understand electrical dynamics also. It's a great comparison of how things work. If you know water, you've been playing with water all your life, I assume, electricity works exactly the same way. The one thing I would say about wattage is one thing you have to remember about wattage is, just like a gallons per hour perhaps, or gallons per minute, wattage is based on a unit of time. And our typical time scenario for wattage is hour. So uh, when you pay your electricity bill, you're paying for kilowatt hours. In other words, 1,000 watts per hour, or you know, 10,000 watts per hour, however many kW you're using. Here you go. You understand the relationships between the electrical values is important. It's very important. That's the whole purpose of Ohm's law, by the way, and I haven't mentioned that yet, but I'm going to beat you on it. Ohm's law, I mean, do we use Ohm's law in the field? No. Are you out there on a daily basis calculating, uh, I know my voltage, I know my resistance, so I need to know my amperage? No. You don't go there. Ohm's law and the study of Ohm's law and the exercise of Ohm's law, particularly the exercise of Ohm's law, is to cause you to develop in your head a relationship between the measurements of electricity and how they affect each other. That's what it's all about. You do need to have that relationship understanding. All right, so that's what Ohm's law is primarily for, is to help you develop that relationship. Is it utilized in the field? No, it's not utilized in the field. I hate to break that to you, but that's the way it is. But if you do have that relationship connection between amps, volts, ohms resistance, and wattage, then you're good to go with electricity.